you were saying, Luke, about not drinking alcohol. I think that's a huge saying that men who drink, I don't drink myself. I never have. And because I didn't drink, even while I was a stripper at the Rhino, I made friends with Floyd Mayweather, who respected me so much because I didn't drink. And he would have me come to his parties. And like chaperone, make sure no one stole anything. And even because I would get tired because I wasn't drinking, he would just say, hey, just go hang out in my closet. His closet's the size of most people's house. So I would just sleep and do you know whatever I wanted to. And then when the party was over, I'd help him clean up. And I think the power of people thinking, oh, you have to drink to be cool. And that's absolutely not true. And in your case, obviously, you you've, you've proven that. So, um, and it can help if you have ED issues, if you don't drink, that's a huge plus too. So I love that you're getting that message out there that you don't have to drink to get involved and to be around beautiful women and not drinking can actually get you into some pretty amazing doors. So I just wanted to commend you for that. Appreciate yeah. hundred percent. And the money yeah. you will save from not going out <laughs> and buying bottles every single night when you're a dude, because when you're a dude, you're not valued by your looks. You're valued by your Correct. status and by your performance. Yeah. So it's yeah. either how you look. It's either what you can bring to the table, like the female friends you know. It's either like how funny you are, your charisma, or the money that you bring. And if yes. you're spending money every single night and that's the only value you have, then that's where girls are going to look at you at. But if you can break rapport, be charismatic, and learn to have game without drinking, that's a huge differentiator. So. It's Huge. And I'm sure that's probably like you not spending money on alcohol, you could invest in this course. And like someone else on here was saying, oh, I'm saving for the course. Well, just omitting that, that's a great thing also for your health. Yeah. And not saying that everyone doesn't have to drink. I know that's not obviously how it goes, but I think that this can also be a huge asset. And bringing up rapport I, is just, it's just a huge thing. And I think that's, you know, Michael's big on psychology as I am too, and, and NLP. And, you know, proximity is power. When you create rapport with women and with anyone, you can do, get anything you want. And so the power of rapport, and I think that's a big message in what you're teaching. And um, I would say this, I wanted to say this earlier when Michael was talking about um, men and women and how they view sex differently. So I, I sum it up like this. Men need sex to even wrap their mind around the possibility of intimacy if it's someone that they choose to take that route with, right? And women need intimacy to even grab, you know, wrap their mind around getting to sex. So you have two total polarized opposite ways. And how do you bridge that gap? And I love what you guys are doing to to teach hey, men. So how to Janelle, I want to, I want to say something really quick. Normally okay. adjusted, normally adjusted men do. A lot of men yes. are willing to do anything they can, even without getting sex. And a lot of, there are also some women out there that are like just down for whatever, and they don't really care about the rest of the stuff. Hey. That's true as well. I, I That's got, true. I got this for you. I got this for you. <laughs> yeah. The other thing about not drinking is like, you can do this kind of lifestyle consistently if you don't drink. If you do drink, imagine how hard it's going to be to go out Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to network for an hour, 45 minutes every single night with like nine different girls. It's impossible because you wake up the next day, your whole morning shot. If you don't drink, you can just do caffeine like Michael does and like I do and a couple of the coaches. Like it's way easier and your mind recovers a lot better and it's you, you can work out, experience. work out yeah. better, be more clarity of thought, clarity of power. I mean, me not drinking, even as an exotic dancer, I had multiple conversations with Rampage. Rampage would rather sit outside of the champagne room and talk with me and my girlfriend from Newport. Come on, Rampage than Jackson. Would. Go in the back. <laughs> yeah. about Curtis Jackson. Oh, okay. Rampage yeah. Jackson. Yeah, he would. Dana White used to be so pissed at him because he was trying to pull him in the back with the blondes in the champagne room, where you know what happens. And he was just like, "No, bro, I want to talk." He liked me because I was just cool. Like I didn't drink, and we would just buy. No, Janelle, the like, Spearmint Rhino is a reputable organization. I don't know what happens back there. I've never been back there. <laughs> I have no fucking clue what you're talking I'm about. I'm sure. I'm sure you. I'm sure you have no, no idea. No what clue what's going when, on there, other than worshiping of our Lord and Savior and reading correct. the gospel. There is that's nothing. Of course, I don't. I, cooking, I, of course. Yeah. No, I, all those nice things. I'm, celebrity. I'm, I'm, I, I have no idea why they're called celebrity booths, and there seems to be <laughs> curtains around them. I have no curtains clue why. around them that no one can get in. It's because that's where the altar is, and that's where you're praying, and you can yeah. take communion back there. But no, but seriously, by me not drinking, I mean at the time, honestly, because I grew up kind of in a cult, so I don't really understand the magnitude of these men that were speaking and engaging with me and trusting me. I didn't know how big they were until I got out of the life. And then I'm like, oh man, that was, people were like, dude, that's, 
that's crazy. But then again, that was another benefit of not drinking for me personally. So for men, it's even more so because like you said, you know, women get shit for free all the time. And with men, you got to earn it a little bit. So, yeah. So just another little sidebar, uh, as well as a Mike Tyson, I used to chat all the time because again, I was always sober and they were just dumbfounded that a woman wasn't drinking in there. So they'd just buy me tons of boss water bottles. <laughs> guys, you remember, do you guys remember my interview with Nara Ford? Nara Ford was like, the alpha female at fucking uh, the Rhino. She was on the cover. She was on the billboard. She's all over their advertisement. She came and did my podcast. She doesn't work at uh, Rhino anymore. What is she? You know why? I... Because of OnlyFans. She told me she makes so much money from OF. But one of the things she said was when she'd go into work, she would drink, you know, the whole gallon of Tito's you can go at the liquor store. She'd finish a whole gallon of fucking Tito. Her and her girlfriend Ooh. would finish a whole gallon of Tito's before they go That's over That's wild. Damn. Yeah, that's wild. My girlfriend today just told me that has a, a med spa out here. I saw I brought something up about, you know, stripping and she goes, Oh girl, I used to strip too. And she was just dumbfounded that I never drank. She's like, how did you do that? And I was like, I'm good at what I do. I know how to connect. I know how to communicate. But yeah, most girls they're drinking or doing extracurricular church activities. 